Hello, I'm Laura Rogers, and I'm looking forward to speaking at SPFS in Washington, D.C. I'll be teaching an all-day workshop called Creating Approval Processes Using Power Automate and Power Apps. So this workshop will include both of these technologies and how we can use them together and sort of make the most of each of the different products when we're building our business processes. Now, our business processes are going to be unique. They're going to be varied. So we'll, at the beginning of this workshop, we'll talk about just components of an approval process, a process like the thing that is being approved and any potential tasks and emails that are involved, approvals that are sent out. And we'll talk about what, the, just the concept of having some sort of user interface around the files or forms and things that are being approved and what the users see and what the approvers see and sort of what they're working with. And so we'll kind of start out by talking about all these concepts and get you thinking about your own business process processes at work. And we'll talk about all these sort of scales of different levels of complexity that these processes can become. So we have some really simple out of the box things that you can do with say an approvals action in flow. And we have um, just some simple forms that you could create in SharePoint with like a setting like the content approval setting. But then we start getting more complex. We start moving even beyond the provided templates and into creating our own processes to make them do exactly what the requirements are. And that can get a little tricky. So it helps to really know what you're working with. It helps to know just sort of um, what's involved in some of these out of, out of the box things like the approvals, action and flow, what it gives you and what it doesn't give you. And then it's important to think about your processes and what's involved in them because that is also going to determine what the best technology is going to be that you'll need to use. And so I'll explain to you ways that you can do things that are more heavy into Power Automate and doing a lot of automation with Flow. But then there's a ton in Power Apps that you can do directly in Power Apps having to do with sending emails and approvals and building a nice slick approval interface. So we'll talk about thinking through your processes and what exactly you need in each process. And then we'll, we'll delve into some pretty nitty gritty specifics. So the, a common concept that you have in approvals is the concept of a routing table. So we'll go over different options as to how do we determine in a business process who the approvers are, are or people involved along the way. Where is that defined? Is it from a group? Is it defined by the person who kicks off the process? And so we'll talk about how this can be accomplished. We'll also talk about weighing why you would do certain things in Flow versus Power Automate. So for example, you can send an email from a Flow, but you can also send an email directly from a Power App if you don't need the complexity of a Flow. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll also talk about going across both products. The two products do integrate Power Apps and Power Automate. And we'll talk about the concept of a Power Apps trigger. You don't always need to use a Power Apps trigger to kick off a flow. So we'll talk about why you would even want to use this, uh, this trigger. And then we will dig into a very specific example. So here's a lovely travel request that I have. We'll talk about how you can build your forms, again, with the business process, but also with some things like having the manager pre-populated, having a specific approver for your department pre-populated, and maybe even read only. So we have a form that has gone through a process and we're capturing all that information and we can see it all right here on the form. So we'll talk about building your business processes, building them in a way that's not only 
not too technically complicated to build, but also weighing that with keeping the end user interface nice and simple so that the people working in the process don't have to go through complicated training just to know how to in be involved in this process. So and we'll, we'll just talk about all these different options for you when you are building your own business processes with Power Apps and Power Automate. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my workshop.